My guest today is Mandy Andre. Mandy is a financial advisor and board certified financial planner. I've actually known Mandy since 2010 when she started her current career. Since then, we've built a valuable business relationship and I'm proud to call her my friend. What's unique about Mandy is that she moved to the United States in her mid thirties without speaking any English. She was born, raised and educated in ex-communist Romania in a very different environment and culture. Arriving in the United States, she had to learn a new language and had to adapt to a completely new culture. Add to that, building a new career that requires skills that can be challenging even for a native speaker. In our interview today, we're going to talk about Mandy's somewhat non-traditional journey and what helped her not only to survive, but thrive in a competitive and very challenging environment here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Welcome to the show, Mandy. Thank you, Mike. It's really an honor to be your guest today. Well, very excited to uh, learn from you and to uh, provide your wisdom to the viewers of my channel, because I know they're going to get a lot out of this. And uh, it's no surprise that uh, Mandy is our guest today with her international uh, background, because many of the viewers of my channel are from countries all around the world. So I know they'll be very interested in today's interview. So let's go ahead and get started with the first question. How hard have you worked to be the success that you are? Mike, I wish I could say that my journey to today was an easy one, but it wasn't. It was very difficult to move to United States without speaking the language, as you mentioned before, it was a brand new country, a, a new environment, and it was extremely hard. But what I can see, say about my uh, journey is that actually I had to do whatever it took to reach my goals, to make sure that everything that I needed to do was done in time and the long hours and the long days and sometimes the weekends were really worth it. There were years when I couldn't take a vacation. Mm -hmm. There were years not necessary because um, I didn't want a vacation, but I couldn't have a vacation. I couldn't afford a vacation. So I did everything that I could do to really reach those goals. Looking back, it was all worth it and I would do it again in a blink of an eye. Even though it took years and years to actually get to where you are now, because as I mentioned, I've, I've known you now for over 10 years and I've seen how hard uh, you have worked to get to where you are now. How did you convince yourself to keep going when you got a lot of rejection? Um, Mike, rejection is, is um, a difficult feeling to deal with in life, in any profession, you know, when we are young, when, you are o when we are old, rejection is everywhere, right? But I was really, really lucky that when I had my first job in Romania, I, I was um, hired in a bank and I had this great mentor. And he told me at that time, you know, the faster you're gonna learn to deal with rejection, the faster you are gonna get to your uh, goal and the easier life is gonna be. So at that time I was very young. I was in my early 20th, 20th. I, I didn't really understand what that mean. But as I went through life and through many challenges, I now realize that rejection is normal and rejection is everywhere. And the way how we learn to deal with our feelings is very important. Now, couple of things that I've done along the way to help me with that. First, I always measured what I could control. I didn't focus on things that I couldn't control. For example, I can never control someone's mood. I cannot control 
if someone will answer the phone or if someone will have an unexpected event and we cannot meet. But I can always control is the activities that I have every single day. I can control my attitude. I, I can control how I prepare. I can control how I deal with time management. There are many things that I can control that will help me when there is rejection, when I have those feelings that maybe could derail me from what I need to do to reach my goals. In those type of situations, focusing on, I can, on what I can control was very important. Now, I've always read, um, I, I've also read a very good book that helped me. It was the fourth discipline of um, execu execution. Um, mm. Have you read that book? I have read that book and I like it a lot. Yeah. So that was a very important uh, book for me because it really taught me how to focus on what I can control and also on what it's important. So then rejection was a, a lot easier to, to deal with. Wow. There, there, there's really a whole lot in that answer. And I really recommend that those of you who are, who are uh, learning a lot already, watch it again because uh, what Mandy is sharing with us is self-control, self-awareness, self-discipline. Uh, these are hallmarks of winners to understand that we can only focus on ourselves. And if we follow core habits, routines, and stick with it, then ultimately success will be ours. But if we allow the world to control how we feel and let rejection, which is a natural part of success, overwhelm us, then we're likely to give up. Uh, so I've, I've, I've learned a lot just from that, Mandy, and, and it gives me uh, courage and strength for whatever the day uh, has for me today. So thank you very much for that. Uh, let me ask you another question related to this, and, and, uh, and you may have something new to share. What do you think are the keys to your success? Mike, that's a great question. I would say that one of the most important things that really helped me to be successful was the fact that from the beginning of my career, I had mentors and coaches. I had great mentors and I can, I can confidently say that I owe my success to several people. And fortunately you are one of those. My Coaching with you right at the beginning of my current profession, I think made a huge difference. And along with other, other mentors of, and coaches, I feel like I've learned very, very important lessons. And I always, um, look, I always had this um, trust in the people around me that they can give me an different perspective. And when I am in those challenging times, asking for help and being open to different perspectives, different ideas, um, understanding that there are so many options in the choices that we can make and finding that right person to, to help you along the journey is very important. I can see many people who are struggling at the beginning. And I, I have this important piece of advice and I know sometimes it's hard to go out there and find the right coach, but you have to, to really um, find that help that will really connect with you that will help you a lot along the way to be successful and to really be able to reach sometimes some audacious goals because I feel like that's the help that I got from my, my mentor, the most important help that I got from my mentors and coaches. Sometimes I didn't have the courage to, to set maybe higher goals, more, uh, more, um, challenging goals and they pushed me um, to, to 
you know, deal with some of the challenges that um, maybe I would have not dealt with if I, it wasn't for them. That is uh, very nice to hear because you know that I'm completely committed to the world of professional development, learning from mentors, advisors, coaches. I've committed my life to that. And, uh, and I hope that uh, others really gain from this, that uh, I've heard this from many successful people that it is the, the people that they turn to for help and guidance uh, when they're not exactly sure uh, how, to, how to push through and how to go to the next level that really makes a difference. Uh, there truly is no such thing as a, a self-made man or woman who hasn't relied on the help and guidance of others at the right times. So uh, I like that a lot. Thank you so much. The uh, next question is related to uh, the idea that we're never ever truly done. What do you still need to get better at? Oh, that is an excellent question. You know, we are always a work in progress, mm -hmm. but there are two things that I really have to get better at. First, I need to learn to say no. Um, that is one thing that I'm still struggling with, and as Warren Buffett say, says, right, the one habit that very successful people have that's different from other people is that they say no to almost everything, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like I still have to learn to say no to things that maybe are not as important and they don't align with my goals. That is one thing that I have been struggling from the beginning of, uh, of uh, my career maybe, and you helped uh, me a lot along the way, but I still find myself in days when I may be tired or maybe um, I didn't plan well enough the day before or I didn't look at my schedule closely enough and I still find that I say yes to things maybe that maybe I should have not said yes. So that is one thing. And the second thing, I have to learn to be a better leader um, and a, a better manager. Uh, we all have to work in teams to, to offer services and to, to build businesses. And that is one area that I do have to um, work on to you know, grow in, in that area. I'm, um, I'm trying to read more about that. And I know that you also helped me a lot with, um, with being a better leader, but definitely that is one area where that I'm currently focusing on and I'm trying to find tools to get better at. Well, I'm sure glad that you didn't say no to this interview because uh, that's also something that I can relate to is the, uh, the need to say no to certain opportunities that make time and space available for perhaps an even better opportunity that's around the corner. You, know, you mentioned Warren Buffett and I had heard that he would say no 99 times so that he'd be available for that one opportunity out of 100 that is the one that he was really looking for. Uh, and uh, in terms of leadership, I feel the same way, that there's always room to grow and improve uh, as a leader. Uh, I can relate to that quite a bit. Now, trust is critical in your line of work. And uh, it's critical in my line of work, too. And really, it is uh, part of the bedrock of, of success uh, long term is the need for trusted relationships. How do you build trust? Mike, trust is so important in our life in general, not uh, in only in our professions, right? Mm -hmm. So I believe that it's, it's about earning trust rather than, you know, assuming trust. And earning trust can be difficult, but at the same time, it's as simple as be honest. Right. It starts with being honest, being honest about what you can do and what you cannot do. Being honest if what you offer is the right thing for someone. 
being honest about who you are, what you do, what you stand for. And if you are not a good fit, you are not a good fit, right? Mm -hmm. Then when you do something, you have to, when you promise something, you have to do what you have promised and maybe a little more. And that extra step will, ha will help build um, trust a little faster, will mm -hmm. help someone look, look at you and say, hmm, this person under promised and over delivered. And that is one thing that helps uh, building trust. Then maybe a third thing would be when you make a, a mistake, just own that mistake. Make sure that you admit the mistake, make, take the steps to correct that as fast, as fast as possible. And people will trust you that next time when something happens, they will be aware and they will know how to address that. Don't try to hide a mistake. Don't try to uh, postpone accepting it. Take responsibility, own your mistakes when necessary. And then probably one of the most important thing, be aware that it's hard to earn someone's trust, but you can lose someone's trust in a blink of an eye and keep that always on the back of your mind. Everything that you do has to be aligned with that desire to be trustworthy, trustworthy and prove people that what you say is what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So, so I, I just want to, to recap the three, three key points. There is one is be honest, right? Uh, keep, keep your word. Uh, and second is to over deliver, uh, which is uh, always an excellent tactic to impress someone and, uh, and have them wanting to come back and do business with you again. And three, is to own your mistakes, right? I've talked about that in past videos, the, uh, the, the need to be responsible and control what you can control. As you said, you can control your response to the mistakes that you make. You can act like it didn't happen or you can own it. And you even mentioned deal with it as quickly as possible, which I think is super important too, because even if you own it, but you put off owning it, then trust is going to erode as the person knows what's happened and is waiting for you to take that ownership. Such good advice there. Now, I've often told people that whatever you do, you're in sales. What do you think about that statement? That's, that statement, Mike, it's so true because in all areas of our life, we have to sell ourselves or something else to someone. If we remember, and it starts when we are really young. If we remember when maybe in middle school, we try to convince our parents to have a overnight party. Um, in high school, we wanted to host the party. So we had to convince our parents that it would be great to, to spend some quality time with our friends. Later on, when we got our first uh, job, uh, our first interview, we had to sell ourselves. So there is sales everywhere in our life. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there are people who have a negative connota connotation uh, to sales just because maybe they had they went through a bad experience maybe someone tried to push something on them right um, there are those feelings that come with the uh, sales for certain people but sales is not about convincing so someone to buy something that they don't need or that uh, it's too expensive for what it's worth. Sales is really not about that. Sales, it's about helping people to find what it's right for them, asking good questions to understand what their problems are and how you can solve them. And the, the, there is an opportunity to solve problems everywhere. 
right? In everything that we do. If you consider yourself being in sales or not, you are in sales, right? Our kids are in sales when they go to school and they have to present uh, what they prepared for, the exam they prepared for, right? Um, maybe an engineer when he, uh, they sometimes don't think that they are in sales, but when they have to go and present the project that they worked on and convince someone that they have to implement what they worked on, that's sales too, even though many engineers will not think that they are in sales. So you are right, there is, we, we, there is sales everywhere. This idea of embracing the concept that you're always in sales because sales is to a degree influence. You are, you are not trying to convince someone to do something that is not in their no. best interest. Uh, as you mentioned earlier in another answer, don't offer something that's not a fit for someone, right? That that's important. And so we're not in the job of trying to sell things to people that they don't need or want. We are in the job of solving problems and providing value. And when you look at it that way, as opposed to trying to push something onto someone, maybe that'll change your perception and frame of reference about sales. And you'll realize that regardless of what you do, that sales is a part of it. That's great. So last question for you, Mandy. You mentioned that uh, you had a challenging time in the beginning because you did not speak English, you were in a new culture, a brand new environment, everything was new and there was a lot of challenge that stood in the way of you being successful. What advice do you have for people who have relocated to America from another country and want to find professional success like you? speak to those people that are recently here in the U.S. following your path. Mike, moving to a different country, knowing or not knowing English can be very challenging because we come from, from different cultures, different education, different environments, right? And I think it's very important to believe in yourself to believe that everything is possible, to believe that America is the land of opportunities. We all know that there are better opportunities he here than probably anywhere else. Also, I would say that stay, staying open-minded and ready to embrace change because when you move to a different country, so many things can be different. And we deal with challenges, especially for me, um, my, my language barriers were, was a huge challenge. And I was always self-conscious about that. And being able to adjust and being able to embrace cha change as I was learning um, the language and I was uh, getting better at the language, that was uh, very important. Then I would say start building a network of supportive and trustworthy people around you as soon as you can. Reach out to people who uh, can help in different, in different way. Don't be shy to ask for help because what was very different here than in my own country, I felt like people were a lot more supportive and they were really uh, ready to help when I asked for help. However, um, I would say that it's very important to know what kind of help you need and to reach out to the right people. So trying to build that network of people around you in different areas, in different prof professions, in um, maybe different fields. It's very, very important um, to do right after you move here. Um, along the way, of course, you will um, get better of making friends and making connections and you will uh, be able to build better relationships, but making sure that you are not shy or afraid to take that steps, step to 
build good relationships and ask for help. I think it's crucial to be able to be a little bit more comfortable with the changes that you have to make in a, a, in a new country. Mandy, you, you have really uh, given some good advice here. And honestly, I think this advice could also be helpful to new graduates because as I listen to it, new graduates are leaving a comfortable environment, which was their institution of higher learning. And they're entering into a new world and forging new relationships, getting out of your comfort zone, moving beyond your community and uh, learning to trust others and ask for help when needed. I feel like this is good advice for more than just people who have recently relocated to America. Uh, so uh, I really appreciate that a lot. The other thing that I heard there that I think is important, and you've probably heard this before, but you need to hear it again, be transparent, be vulnerable. Mandy shared with you uh, some of her own challenges with her uh, learning a new language and her own self-consciousness around that. We all have areas of ourselves that we're self-conscious about, but being vulnerable and being open to understanding our limitations and pushing past those limitations are keys to success. So uh, thank you so much, Mandy, for sharing a lot about your journey to, uh, to get you to where you are now. Uh, this has been uh, super instructive and helpful, and it's everything that I was hoping that it would be. So thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very much for inviting me.